Michigan recruiting is picked up in a big way with Andrew Babalola, the five-star offensive tackle, having joined the class. There's now a couple guys like Shamari Earls looking to maybe flip from Georgia. Sam Webb over at uh, Michigan Insider has put in a crystal ball prediction. Steve Lorenz also over there has put in uh, crystal ball predictions for Jamar Browder, the wide receiver committed to uh, NC State, as well as uh, Malachi Lee, the offensive tackle from Hawaii in 2026. We're going to break down some recruiting as well as talk about Michigan versus Michigan State. We're going to do that here today with Bryce Marich from over at TMI on this episode of Lockdown Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Holt, publisher (laughs) of Wolverines Wire, through USA Today Sports Media Group. This laryngitis fest for me continues. Therefore, we are going back to the well, and for the first time, I think ever on this show, we're bringing on Bryce Marich, my ex colleague, well, still colleague, but ex coworker at 24 seven sports. He and I hang out. Uh, I probably hang out with Bryce more on the sideline than anyone else. So Bryce excited to have you on, man. Appreciate it, man. I don't, yeah, this first, I'm a first timer. So I uh, appreciate being on the show. Well, it's first time and it's also the last. So that's exciting for everybody. Uh, Works for me. <laughs> Um, first I, I want to get your opinion on Babalola. You can speak better than I can on recruits and stuff because you're, you're a little bit more into not just the, um, you're a little bit into the scouting, not, not necessarily, you're not necessarily a scout, but you're more into the scouting than say someone like me, who's just more into the story. So how big is it for Michigan to have been able to close on a guy like Babalola who had basically an opportunity to go to anywhere in the country? <clears throat> I, you know, we talked about this on our podcast, but I think the biggest thing for Michigan was the perception. Um, Michigan right now has kind of lost a couple games. They're out of college football contention. There's not a lot going in their direction for Shrum Moore, but he's trying to build his first class up and he needs a headliner. He needs that crown jewel. And that's what Babalo is. He's the number 11 overall uh, player, uh, 24-7 sports 6'6", 285, he's a monster. And what's unique about him is he's only played two years of football. Like, this is a guy you watch, and you're like, he is just scratching the surface of his potential. Like, the amount of upside is insane. I, You know, I think, too, a lot of credit has to go with uh, Sharon Moore, head coach, Grant Newsom, the offensive line coach, and Sam Popper, uh, the director of recruiting, all three of them were, they played pivotal roles in kind of securing him because at one point he was looking at Stanford um, and he's a huge, huge high academic kid. And a lot of people thought they might be leading. And then Auburn was in the mix and they had made a big push with an IL. And Michigan kind of was always in the picture, but they were never presumed as the leader until I, I would say coming out of that official visit in the summertime, he came up uh, and fun no or fun fact about him. He was actually born in the state of Michigan, Bloomfield Hills. So he's got, know. you know, he's got roots here, but you know, this is not a guy, obviously he, he lives in Kansas now, um, but his family, you know, he still has family in the area and they are Michigan fans and they really like the program on off the field and what they have to offer. And like I said, with him considering, if you look at his top list and the schools he was kind of taking the most serious look at, Stanford being in the mix was the most intriguing because it's like that shows as much as Stanford has struggled on the field, they don't struggle in the classroom. And for him to be high academics like that, that's a big thing. And the other thing with him is when you think of five stars and now this new era of college football recruiting, the biggest thing that people say is NIL. How much is it going to take to scare this pledge? How much is it going to take to get him to campus? And for him, that was never the case. You know, he was never looking at it from a money perspective, from a money decision. That's just not the type of family he comes from. That's just not the type of kid he is. 
So I think he was a perfect fit for Michigan on and off the field. Looking at his game, though, and what Michigan's getting, they're getting a generational talent. I think he's got first-round potential written all over him. Like I said, 6'6", 285. You put on 20, even, you know, 20, 25 pounds. You know, I don't think right away he's going to start. You know, I know a lot of people see that five-star status, and they're just expecting him, the future left tackle, um, start next year. But I think for him, being so new to the game, he's got to develop tendencies, technique. He's got to sharpen up, you know, his craft. And once he puts on more of that weight, I think then he'll start figuring it out and be able to dominate even more. So I see him in this first year when he gets to Michigan as being that extra offense lineman. Michigan has always used guys like Trent Dave Jones. Um, at different guys, I think Gentry this year has done that role pretty often. And I think he would excel in that role pretty good. So elite, elite talent. He has a basketball uh, background. He played AU with Andrew Sprague. Um, and they always joke back and forth about who's a better basketball player who's not. And at one point, he thought he was going to play basketball. And then finally, his basketball coach and others were like, hey, Andrew, I think you should check out the football field. And I think that was a wise decision. But overall, I think it's a great win for the class, great win for the program. And most importantly, it was a great perception win because Michigan just needed this in the most badly way. Well, let's stay on 2025 uh, and before we move to 2026 next segment. Uh, but there's a number of guys Michigan is either – well, let's stay, let's stay with the idea of who, who could Michigan bring in. And then if we, I guess we're probably gonna have to go into segment two with uh, some of that. But uh, what, when you look at some of those uncommitted guys or guys who are committed elsewhere, I mentioned Browder, I mentioned um, Shamari Earls, who suddenly uh, has gotten all this uh, hype and attention in the last 24 hours, a little bit longer on your site, uh, but now it just kind of the world knows. Uh, and then you've got other guys looming out there like Nathaniel Owusu, Bo Tang. Um, there's a couple of defensive tackles that they're trying to flip. Where do you see kind of this class finishing out in terms of like, who do you think can be added to the class? Well, I know if people have been kind of following our site, we've been now known as the favorite uh, site for fireworks. Uh, we have <laughs> uncle Sam over there is now what I'm coining him because there's a lot of momentum on the trail for Michigan. As much as it doesn't seem like it is, there is. And Michigan has done a lot of work behind the scenes with guys. Shamar Eros, you just mentioned, this is a guy that Michigan got up on during the summertime. They were in great position. And then all of a sudden, Georgia kind of really got in the mix, picked things up, and he decided to take his talents to Athens. Michigan just didn't take, you know, they're iron out the fire. Like that was a type of recruitment that they are going to stand regardless, no matter what they see him as like a CB one, you know, and they pitched to him when he first was getting recruited as Will Johnson's replacement. Like they look at him that highly. They think he's that regarded and he, it makes sense. He's highly coveted. He's a top 100 prospect, six two two five. We have to update his weight, but he can fly. He's got great hips. He's fluid. He's got great ball skills. There's a lot to like about him. And so I think Michigan and Lamar Morgan have done a great job of keeping those relationships strong, showing him he's a need. And I think the funny thing about this whole season is as much as pain as painful it is to see a team that's four and three and struggling in so many areas, it can be a blessing but a curse, you know, because guys are going to see the opportunity in the field. You know, like this is a type of team that they're going to have to replenish this roster. You know, I think that you're going to have to see in the portal, but also in this recruiting class. And he's going to have the opportunity to come in and step in those shoes left by Will Johnson and maybe other spots. So he's a type of guy that that opportunity to play, to excel and be on the big stage is very enticing, very appealing. And I, I just love where Michigan stands. He's going to be coming up on a trip, a return trip this weekend. And if everything goes well, which I think it will, I think there's, I think he's going to be in this class. Well, let's, let's continue talking a little bit about some of those 2025 guys before we 
start getting into some of those more intriguing names. There's two in particular. Uh, well, one in one in 2025 and then one in 2026. That's also visiting, I should say. Uh, let's do that here in just a moment. But before we do, listen, you're going to want to have a little extra fun while you are watching the game tomorrow. And the best way you can do that is with prize picks. Now, what is prize picks? Prize picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, prize picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on just two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on prize picks. Prize picks is the best place to get real money sports action. Join over 10 million users and sign up today. Prize picks invented the flex play, flex play rather, which means you can still cash out if your lineup is not perfect. You can double your money even if one of your picks doesn't hit. Prize picks. Prize picks puts its members first, so all the withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit. I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. PrizePix also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, PrizePix discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value to your lineups. So download the app today. Use the code Lockdown College to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Download Prize Picks the app today. Use the code Lockdown College and you can get fifty dollars instantly with your first five dollar lineup. Prize Picks daily fantasy made easy. All right, we're going to continue on here in just a moment, but before we do, uh, a lot of you have noticed. A lot of you ask, where do I get some of my cool Michigan gear? I'm wearing. If you're watching on video right now. I am wearing my Michigan undefeated hoodie. It's the most comfortable hoodie I own. Super stylish, super cool. With college football season being well underway, you're going to need to get some of that awesome gear uh, to have. And the best place you can do it is over at Homefield. They've got the best Michigan apparel in the game. Homefield is a premium collegiate apparel company based in Indianapolis. And there's no place I'd rather get my Michigan gear from. With a retro modern style, Homefield scours every school's history to find these absolutely amazing designs that you're going to absolutely love. And you're also going to really stand out. They just released these new, uh, what are they, like coaches jerseys that are super cool. You're going to want to get your eyes on it. There's a bomber jacket I'm really hoping they bring back for the holidays. But they've got a couple other really cool bomber jackets still, other than the national championship one I covet. So go to homefieldapparel.com and use my code GOBLUE24 to get 15% off of your first order. That's homefieldapparel.com, promo code GOBLUE24 to get 15% off of your first order. Homefield Apparel, just the coolest college gear anywhere. All right, continuing on with Bryce Marich. I want to ask you about another, uh, there's a five-star quarterback who also shares the name of Bryce. His last name is also Marich. Oh, wait, nope, sorry, that's you. You you, you keep on trying to tell everybody that you're the, I, I think my favorite thing is because we've had this on-running joke for like six years, that you're like the first six-star and you're like this, like the, the best athlete in the world. Just to see Blue by 90, our friend Justin Rowe over there tweet like, Please get Bryce Marriage to commit. <laughs> like tagged you in it. Uh, it's yeah. like, and he's not even in on the joke. He's just he no. just act, he he got Twitter fingers. So, no. um, how how real though do you feel like this Bryce Underwood smoke is at the moment? Uh, well, you know, I was. I'll just say this. I think that was a recruitment that I don't think Michigan was ever going to give up in. One, he's the number one player in the country. Two, he's right down the road. And three, he's at arguably the most important position. And as you can see, Michigan needs dire help there. So this was a recruitment. I don't think Michigan was ever going to give up. We had kind of beat the drum that you don't give up a recruitment like this. This is until he signs on the dotted line. You don't stop recruiting Bryce Underwood. He's, He's a generational talent. I've had multiple coaches from other programs tell me we see first round potential. This is a guy that we even talked. I talked to some of the experts at 24 seven that said, if he was, if he was in the 2024 class, he would still be looked at as the number one prospect that cycle. I mean, he is that exceptional of a talent. I'm a huge fan of him. He's led Belleville now to state titles. It's a great shot. He could do it again this season as a senior. And I think Michigan sees that talent. 
they see a guy right in their own backyard and they they've let a couple of those guys get away Dante Moore you know CJ Carr some of these expert quarterbacks in the state of Michigan leave and go elsewhere and I think with Bryce as big of it is an uphill battle you can't stop the you can't stop the fight and this is one where I think Michigan knows that they see it's a position of need and they're attacking it obviously you have a quarterback commit in the class and Carter Smith but when you look at Carter Smith you know my comparison for him was like Max Duggan but and that's a great quarterback and I know a lot of you know Michigan fans may be like oh, Max Duggan like we, we don't want to hear that name again right we had experienced that in the the freaking playoffs a couple years ago but Max Duggan was a very quality quarterback you know in college and I think he can get to that level the problem is Max didn't become Max Duggan right away and with Carter he's more of a dev- developmental prospect I think he can get there but again with how the quarterback class or room looks right now <clears throat> you need a guy to step in day one and kind of lift the floor of that room and I'm not saying he won it, but I'm also not saying it's a guarantee he's going to do exactly that. So with Bryce, I know for a fact Michigan is still working there. We'll see what happens. I'm not going to get in super, super details, but I know Michigan is still definitely trying in that recruitment. And that's a guy, obviously, they would love to land. So biggest thing to look out for, in my opinion, is seeing if he visits. You know, if he comes up to Michigan, any games, any, you know, anything like that, I think that's very telling. Because, one, he hasn't been down to LSU for various reasons. I'm not going to look too deep in that. I know some are, but I'm not. But if he publicly goes out and visits Michigan, he knows what that's going to bring. That's going to bring questions. That's going to bring a bunch of things he's going to have to address And I think he's been very smart because if he is seriously considering Michigan, he knows if I step foot on campus and I go to one of those games, people are going to take photos. People are going to see me. People are then are going to hit me up. And if he's not seriously considering Michigan, I don't think he's going to make a trip. So that's the biggest thing is, does he make it to campus for one of these games? And that's something I think Michigan fans should look out for. It's a little far though. It's it's to 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 get in the the car and go ten miles. It's just it's too much. I mean, there's a lot of construction on ninety four. I don't know if yeah, you saw exactly. it. So just, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. I mean, I guess you can take back roads, live, but as someone who used to live in Belleville, I can tell you it's an arduous journey. One hundred percent. All right, we, we're running out of time, so I don't, I'm not going to touch on any more 2025 guys. But there is a 2026 guy who was visiting this weekend that I am curious about, and that's Savion Hyder. What, what do you what do you see from him, and where where do you think Michigan stands in his recruitment? Yeah, I mean, this is a you know a guy that I he's a five star in the composite. Um, he's a dynamic running back. Michigan has excelled in the running game, and one of the bright spots I would say this year alone has been the running game and seeing guy like Cleo Mullings and others step up in that facet of the offense. So that's been very helpful but I think the biggest thing in that recruitment has been Tony Alford you know Tony Alford offered him the running back coach here when he was at Ohio State he carried over that relationship to Ann Arbor and since then has gotten him up to campus a couple times and now he's returning this weekend that's a huge positive that's another step in the right direction and as many you know he's got Georgia he's got all the big timers after him I think Michigan's right there. I, I would say he, you know, he's kind of narrowed it somewhat down. But if I had a pick today, I think they're at the near the top of that leaderboard, maybe like top three ish. And that's kind of where I'd position Michigan right now for him. All right. Well, we, we're going to talk a little bit about the game we are both about to be on the sidelines for. That's Michigan, Michigan State. We'll have a couple minutes on that here in just a moment. But before we do, hey, NFL fans, season is well underway, except for the Minnesota Vikings who stopped having their season yesterday. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view the live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. 
You can start with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. All right, Bryce, we got a couple minutes left. Um, you haven't seen the last couple games in person. You've watched them on TV. I've unfortunately seen the last two games in person. I wish I was watching on TV because I could have changed the channel. I could have gone back to watching episodes of Suits. That's what I'm binging right now. But um, there's rumors that Michigan's going to maybe make another quarterback change. Um, it, it sounds like maybe Davis Warren ends up getting the call instead of Jack Tuttle. But what when you go into a game like this, Michigan with its back against the wall, just what do you want to see? You know, what what do you feel like? Because you you've seen the first five games of the season, and it's been very hit or miss. But what what do you feel like you feasibly could see that could lead to a win tomorrow? I think the biggest thing I want to see from Michigan is a concrete plan. You know, I think sometimes going into some of these games, they've had, you know, the scripted drives and they kind of have an idea of what they want to do, but then maybe they get down or maybe things happen and they've changed quarterbacks. They've shuffled different positions, putting, changing the centers out. Now they've changed out the right tackle. So I think the biggest thing for me personally, first off, is just having a concrete lineup and like, this is our guy. And this is how we want to utilize them throughout the game. Second, I really want to see adjustments. You know, I think sometimes throughout these first or these several weeks, we've seen Michigan kind of not make as many as we we're accustomed to in the past several years. You know, that's Michigan's bread and butter was at halftime. They'd go in the locker room, make those adjustments, come out and blow away the opponents. And it seems like this year they go in the locker room and the team just happens to fall off for whatever reason it is. So if they make those adjustments, because you know this is going to be state Super Bowl. This is where they want to come in. It's John, Jonathan Smith's first season. And if he, the icing on the cake is if he could come in the big house, get that win over his in-state rival, and kind of plant that flag and say, hey, we're the premier number one program in-state after everything Michigan just went through winning a national title, that's demoralizing. So biggest thing, make the adjustments, stick with a lineup and execute it. You know, I think sometimes we, you, me, especially on the field, we see the plays there. You just got to make the plays, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, even sometimes the coaches call a perfect play, the routes there and the quarterbacks miss it for whatever reason, or a guy misses a block and he, you know, Donovan Edwards doesn't, he only takes a two yards and stuff, maybe 70, right? So those three things. And then I think the biggest thing in the game is you got to contain in and Childs, you know, keep those rush, those rush lanes sound. We saw Quinn yours, especially in the field, you get a different look and you saw him kind of escape the pocket and find guys in the back, you know, his tight end Gunner Helm, a bunch in that week two win. And Michigan, you know, he's even more dynamic than Quinn yours. So you cannot let him escape the pocket, flush out there, and then either have that option to run or pass. Michigan has to contain him, almost do like a mush rush, and kind of keep him contained around, circled, and have him beat you with his arm. I think if they force him to pass the ball, that's the best game plan for Michigan to go for in this, uh, this game. But... Yeah, it's going to be interesting for sure. And I, I think Michigan, as much as they've struggled these past two weeks, they still have a great shot to win this one. I mean, technically, it's still like when you look at the advanced analytics, SP plus, uh, Bill Connolly's ranking on ESPN, that's still Michigan's ranked 24th and MSU's ranked 76th or 72nd or something like that. So it's from on paper, Michigan's still better, but on paper, Michigan was probably much better in those same metrics compared to Illinois as well. I think the big thing is win the turnover battle. Michigan can get through this game, not turning the ball over, which hasn't happened yet in a game this year, which is unbelievable to me. I think Michigan wins. Problem is I, I have yet to see Michigan not turn the ball over in a game multiple times. Michigan very well could be weirdly enough undefeated if they didn't turn the ball over you're just not going to win games against good teams and or teams with a pulse 
and you turn the ball over three times, um, which is what they just kind of do. But MSU is the uh, the other team that they've got 15 turnovers themselves. You've got to be able to turn them over and limit your own turnovers. So that would be my thing. Um, so who are you picking? I'm going to put you on the spot, and then I'll give you mine. Uh, on the spot, um, I think they're going to step up. I think they're going to make plays. And I'm going to go 24-23 Michigan. Wow. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea how this game is going to go. No idea. The only thing I know is I hope both teams have fun. That's, that's the only thing I know. No, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Michigan. I know this is an abomination of a hat. Um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Michigan state. Honestly, I just think that they're a little bit more cohesive at this point. I know people are saying they don't think Michigan can score another touchdown. We've seen them score touchdowns this year when they stick to an identity, kind of keeping to your point. But I, I'm an, Michigan's going to need a defensive touchdown. Doesn't necessarily. I'm hearing mixed things about Will Johnson and his ability to play in this game. But I'll go Michigan State 24, Michigan 17. That's what I'm going to go with right now. I'm hope I hope to be proven wrong. All right, that's Bryce Marich over there from the MichiganInsider.com over on the 24/7 Sports Network. Follow him at Bryce Marich. Uh, you can see it, his name there on the Chiron if you're watching instead of listening. And he'll have, have all the information there. He does an incredible recruiting work. So definitely give him a follow and uh, find out what he knows. He's he's one of two people I go to whenever I have recruiting questions. So, um, uh, Bryce, thanks for joining. Taking the pressure Absolutely. off my voice. All right. Absolutely. That'll do it for us. Today, we'll be back uh, sometime over the weekend, post-game. I'm assuming Sunday because night game tomorrow. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again soon. Peace. Peace.